Hello and welcome! I'm working on a beach cave painting today because I'm participating in the underwater art challenge that's being hosted by the lovely Dina Tollefson and I'll tell you more about that in a moment but what you can see me doing right now is sketching out the main lines from this gorgeous image I've found and I'll pop the links to that in the description. It's a lovely striking image with a strong sense of darks and I'm only going to need four or five colours to create the whole painting. So at the moment I've grabbed a piece of scrap watercolour paper and I'm just testing out the four or five colours that I think I might need to create this whole painting. I've got important darks to put in, as I said, that's the most striking part of this whole picture. And I'm going to go with a colour called Neutral Tint, which is one of my favourites in my palette, and that's going to make up the bulk of this picture. I'm going to start by splashing in a bit of clean water here and there across the horizon, because I'm going to put in some warmth at the in the sky at that horizon level. So I'm making sure it goes into the sky and also down a bit into what will be the sea eventually. And this is the colour that's also going to be the sand, and a lot of the sand is in shadow, so there's only little bits of sand that we will be able to see standing in the foreground in front of this little figure. If we haven't met before, then thank you for clicking on this video and a very warm welcome to my channel. I'm Kerry Woodhouse and I love to share my enthusiasm for watercolour with you in these videos. If you love loose expressive watercolour too, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And if you want to know when the new video comes out, which I do every Wednesday, please think about hitting that notification bell too. Now let me tell you a little bit more about this challenge. The Underwater Art Challenge is being hosted by Dina Tollefson, and I'll pop the links to her channel up in the top right corner of this video. If you haven't come across Dina before, please go over and visit her. You'll find that her channel is full of uh, tips and painting advice for artists of all kinds, and Dina is a very warm and supportive member of our little YouTube art family. Dina's challenge is open to all kinds of artists, so if you've got a mind to create a painting, please jump in and join us, we'd love to have you. There's a short video on Dina's channel explaining how to participate, but basically all you need to do is create an artwork that follows the prompt underwater, which is to create an artwork that features underwater creatures or scenes or features a body of water in some shape or form. And what I've chosen to do is create this beach cave scene. I love this image because of the amazing sort of tunnel composition that it's got. Naturally because of the arch of this beach cave and the dark shadows in the front of it, the image is kind of framed by the natural features of what we're looking at and that's such an exciting thing to paint and I've been doing that uh, a fair bit. I, I've only really recently realised that this was what I was doing. Um, I'll pop a link in the top corner to another video that shows a painting that also has this tunnel composition, but that one is using a window view, but it's the same sort of idea that something in the image that we're painting is creating a kind of internal frame, which I'm really enjoying. Another thing that I really liked in this image is the tiny little figure under that big imposing arch of the beach cave. I really like that feeling of space and the sort of the idea of the vast majesty of the sea and nature in general that the, that kind of size perspective is portraying. And adding figures to any sort of landscape gives a painting so much life scale and interest, but I know it's something that can feel really quite intimidating. But this is a bit of a solution to that scary aspect because I'm going to end up painting this figure just in silhouette. So it's kind of a lovely way to tiptoe into painting figures because I don't have to do any detail. All I have to get right is the nice strong outline. If you do find the idea of adding figures to your painting slightly terrifying, I do have another video that's all about that with a slightly unconventional approach perhaps to the whole idea of warming up to the possibility that you could in fact add some figures to your drawings and paintings. Check the links in the description to this video too because I've also got a detailed post all about how to draw people to add to your paintings. 
Right now you can see me working on the sea and I do love painting the sea uh, an awful lot. I'm using a colour called Cascade Green and when you put it in, in quite thick paint it's a very dark green but as you put in some water it turns into these lovely soft blues. I've put in a bit of clean water again all around that arch area because I know that's what I'm going to work on next. So I'm putting in the sharp ragged edges and that right there is just why I love watercolour. It's doing so much interesting work for me uh, and so is the brush for that matter because I know the edges of that rock are kind of ragged so I don't want a neat clean line and because I've put the water in first uh, where the wet paint meets that bit of water it'll just make those beautiful watermarks all on its own and I think those give the suggestion of the rock rather effectively. In the image that is one flat colour and this is one of the areas where I'm very happy to deviate from the, the reference. In fact it's never my goal to replicate a reference photo at all and I love it when the watercolour itself is going to add so much interest to the picture. In the bottom left there you can can see what we call dry brush technique and that is where I've put in thick dark paint over a dry paper and it's skipped on the textured surface leaving those little white speckles which I think are such a lovely texture to suggest rocks and that's nothing in the reference photo but we know those are rocks so I love the feel of that. And now you can see I'm painting that figure and my pen is, my brush is at 90 degrees to the paper standing straight up because that gives me the sharpest tip. And all I had to do was put in that bold outline figure. No details are required when you're painting a silhouette. Now those were very strong darks if you remember the, the photo, that lovely dark shape that is framing this uh, image. So I've gone back in and this is also because watercolour dries lighter than you think it's going to and it's also the point at which I really wish there was somebody stopping me because I am in danger of losing some of those lovely fresh watermarks that I got in that initial first wash. So it's a cautionary tale I guess to always be bold with your darks in watercolour which is sometimes a, a counterintuitive thing if we think of watercolour as something we have to build up in gentle layers. Thank you for watching. See you again next time. Happy painting.